Hi everyone, so I'm here today to share five cards that I made using Lawn Fawn's new Magic Picture Changer Die and Get Well Before and After Stampin' Die sets. And this little card you see here was made using both of those products. And I'm gonna show you how to make it here today. So these are the two Magic Picture Changer dies. The one on the left is the main set and then the set on the right is the add-on. I recommend getting both the add-on and the main set because it will help your cards to be framed appropriately. As we go on, you'll, you'll see what I mean. But that little frame on the right-hand side is a really important piece to the overall just look of the card. And if you don't have it, you'll feel like your card is missing something. So anyway, the items on the screen now are those dies that are included in the main die. And it includes both parts of the magic picture changer mechanism that you need to do your before and after pictures, as well as a small frame for the picture center and a little pull tab. The add-on also has another version of the pull tab that says pull, and then it has this nice frame that covers the entire front of the card that you will want. To start, I just cut a piece of 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock in half. So these panels are four and a half inches by 11 inches and you're going to when you position the dies you're going to position them towards one end both of them because the little picture that we're going to draw is going to be right in the center of that little square so to start we're going to start with our before picture and the before picture is the one that goes into the larger die the one that's on the right of the screen now and we're going to use the little whale from the get well before and afters and we're going to color him in with some gray markers i also added a little bandage stamp that was also part of the stamp set and we're just going to color him in in some cool gray markers and then i'm going to show you a really cool technique to give him like a little green hue to make him look like he's just all all shades of sickly um, and one thing I want to point out is that it is best to use the 80 pound cardstock for this particular card type, just because I feel it makes the mechanism slide a little bit better. But one of the things you'll have to watch out for with your Copic coloring is that the paper isn't as thick and you, you are prone to having the marker bleed through if you try to color the way you do on 110 pound cardstock. So I'm being real careful here to lay down no more than two layers of color. So you may notice that it looks, I'm a little bit lighter handed than I usually am. And I still ended up getting a little bit of bleed through, but that's okay. So now we're gonna put the little green hue. So I'm just using a YG11 marker and I'm just dotting it um, along the center of the whale and I'm doing that because I want to minimize bleeding and then I'm just going to smooth out the edges with my C1. So now we have this cute whale who looks like he is just not having the best day. So we're going to color in his thermometer and the little heating water water bottle heating heating bottle heating pad not sure what you call it on top of his head and we're going to use BG000 and BG15 for the little cap on the water bottle. I use my toner gray markers there, but you can use any gray. I'm just drawing in the horizon behind him and this is the frame that is going to surround our scene. So I'm just drawing it around our little well so that I have a frame of reference so I know how far my coloring needs to extend out. And since he's feeling a little sick, I thought a gray, windy, maybe rainy sky would, would match best. So. I'm just adding that in with my cool gray markers and then we're going to paint in the ocean and for the ocean i'm using b34 and then b37 i really love this color combination it's a really really bright and just deep shade of blue and i thought that it would be just perfect for this little ocean scene so i'm going to put a little bit of a shadow around the whale with the B37. And then I'm gonna add in some little waves and ripples also with the B37 and then I will blend it all together with the B34. 
and I'm just going to be careful again because of the, the bleeding issue, especially when I get close to the sides of the whale. I'm going to be very careful because we don't want to ruin all that nice coloring that we did on the whale. So I'm almost done here, just blending things out. And then we're almost done with our before scene, but I just thought we needed to darken up our sky a little bit more just to make it match the, the deepness of the blue sea. And I'm being really, really careful um, as I shade the area around the whale, because again, I don't want it to, to bleed at all. Okay, so now when you place the die, you're going to place it so that the scene appears exactly as you want it in that little square. And then the after scene is what we're going to use the second die for. So the smaller die is for the after scene. So just remember that when you're coloring your pictures, your before scene is the large die, your after scene is the small die. Because if you do it backwards, you'll be upset because then you'll have an after that comes um, before the before, which no one wants. We want our, our after to follow the before. Okay, so for our after whale, he is so nice and happy and healthy. So we got to remove the bandage from him. He's going to have a beautiful gray hue. All that sickly green is going to be gone. And he's also so happy he's able to like spout some water up from his little gill or blowhole. Blowhole. I think that's what it is. And so we're going to shade him in in some darker gray shades just to, I think, kind of show that he's healthy and and just feeling a lot better and his color has returned. So I'm gonna use my C5, my C3, uh, C1, and then also a C0. And I'm focusing the shading on the outside of his body and keeping the um, area around his eye pretty light and the fin pretty light as well. And I'm just gonna blend that all together, being careful on this 80 pound cardstock to not um, add too much color. So. Just like before, I drew in the horizon and I'm gonna add the sky. And since he's feeling better, it also I guess nature is also feeling better along with him. And we have a beautiful, sunny, clear, crisp blue day for this little whale um, as he's swimming through the ocean. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading with my B63 and then my B60 marker. This really wasn't necessary. We're not gonna see a lot of this um, a lot of this is going to appear outside the square, but um, I just felt like playing with my marker, so that's why I did that. And then I'm just going to blend everything out with the BG00. And then we're going to move to the ocean around the whale, and we're going to color it in the exact same way that we colored in the before version of the whale. So we're going to use that B34 and then the B37 and we're just gonna be careful around the whale itself so that our color doesn't bleed. And then I'm gonna add the waves the same way that I did with the B37 and the little shadow and ripples of water around the whale as well with a, a B37. And for this, just have fun with this. You know, it doesn't, the lines don't need to appear in any particular um, order or length or width as long as they're going horizontally, you're good and you will make the appearance of wave. So don't try to copy exactly how I have it here. Just sort of have fun with it. And this is a good, um, this is a good picture to practice your shading on. So for the little um, water, I'm going to color that in with the same colors that I colored in our sea underneath the whale. And now I'm just going to arrange where I want my magic, the, the second part of the magic picture slider to sit, and that looks good to me. So I've run both pieces through my die machine, and now I'm gonna show you how to assemble the two pieces. These are the only two pieces that you need to make the actual magic picture changer mechanism. And this is a really, really well-made die. I feel like this one came together really, really easily for me. Um, I didn't have the same difficulties with it that I did with the magic, the, the double slider card that I felt was a little bit finicky, this one. 
um, is pretty easy to manipulate and you don't have to worry about glue getting stuck and, um, you know, little annoyances like that. So on the sides, there are little one eighth inch tabs and you're going to put score tape on both the front and the back of those little tabs. And I'm using my bone folder to make sure that I get a really good crease. And what we're doing now is we're creating the track for the after picture to sit in. And I didn't find that I needed to use an anti-static powder tool here or anything because I really didn't have issues with the glue sticking beyond where it was supposed to. Because again, I think this is a really well-made die. Okay, so now this is the most difficult part is going to be adding in the after. And it's real simple. Just line them up so they're both facing forward, flip, put the little tab through the slot, flip it over, right? And then make sure that the pictures are even on the bottom. And then you're just going to press with your thumb on each tab and it is going to just push that little, those little flaps on the right hand side um, into the, the first tab. So let's take a look at, I'll show you what I mean. So do you see those little tabs that are sticking out? Those are the tabs from the after picture and they just fit in perfectly on the track and then you can move the picture up and down and then the magic picture uh, mechanism it, changer is activated. And if what I said was confusing, just shut off the volume while you rewatch that portion and just watch my hands because I think it's pretty, it, it's pretty easy to follow if you just watch my hands. And also when you have this in your hands, it's going to make sense. Um, it, it's just the type of thing I think that you have to do and, and it'll make sense to you. And it was really easy. I didn't throw out any of the versions that I made. So I didn't make any mistakes. And usually I make at least one or two mistakes when I'm using a new interactive die like this. Um, now I'm just adding the little handle or the little lever onto our um, card. And this is the frame that comes as part of the add-on. And this is the one, see, if you don't have that frame, look at what your picture is going to look like. It's going to look all messy, right? You really need this frame to just clean up, to just clean up the card design. So I'm going to use a sentiment from the get well before and after stamp set that says get well soon. I think that's so cute. And I'm just going to heat set that. And then I'm going to put everything onto an A2 size card base. The paper that I'm using there, it's not a card stock. It's actually the toned gray Strathmore paper. Um, I bought that recently and I just thought it would look nice with the other colors in, in this card. So I'm going to pop up our little focal panel that has our magic picture changer mechanism in place. I'm going to put that on top of our card base. And then I'm just going to add some little images that I colored and cut and just add them as little decorations around the, around the card. So we have our little bird who's wearing a nurse hat. So cute with a, holding a bandaid and then standing on a little box of pills. And then we have our whale our sick whale and then our well whale. And let's take a look at a couple other versions I made. So this one says wishing you a fast recovery. And I used all three images or all six images that are included in the get well stamp set. And I just think that's adorable. This one I like too. It says, hope you're back on your feet soon. And it has a little turtle who's on his back and then he's all well and better and walking in through the grass again. This one I love when your world feels upside down, I'm here for you. And the little nurse pops up behind the, behind the turtle, just ready to assist and just be a friend. Um, so those are all the cards that I have for now. I urge you to, if you're interested in making these magic picture sliders, go through your older stamp sets and just play and have fun. I bet there are lots of different versions of this card that you could make that you don't need the specific before and after stamp sets to do. I know I am going to start going through all of my stamp sets this afternoon and just 
play away. I think I'm gonna make a birthday card using the Baked With Love stamp set that has like all the little ingredients um, for the before shot and then maybe a, a birthday cake for the after shot. You could do some surprise birthday cards with um, you know, maybe a little cake and then for, as the before and then for the after you could have like a whole bunch of little critters and party hats behind it, um, kind of like a surprise celebration. So lots of, lots of things you could do. I'd love to hear from you what types of cards you're thinking of making and I will see you again in the next video. Have a great day everyone.